Hello everybody and welcome back to the dig side. Um, this is a little bit of a request video and I don't have a script for this video either so it's a bit off with the cuff. Um, I just stumbled over my words there but I'm going to keep talking anyway. Um, yeah, this was requested to me by someone on my Discord server which is kind of dead so don't try to join it please. Um, the Discord server was abandoned a while ago but there are still some people hanging out in there and uh, one of them is uh, Jurassic Chicken who is the guy who requested this uh, to me. And uh, basically, he wanted to know what the difference and, um, I guess, the definition, the individual definitions of um, adaptations and evolution is. So, um, it's a very, it's an interesting topic because, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going back to science now. I made a, a video, a two-part video about a crime, and um, I think I'll do that every week. I'll make a crime video every week, and then the rest of it will be more scientific-based. Um so, yeah, this video is all science and interesting stuff about evolution and adaptation and the difference between them and their individual respective definitions. So, um, let's start with adaptation because it's a bit easier to get a, uh, an understanding of. It's a lot more of a surface level um, thing. So, basically, adaptation is um, uh, a very quick, responsive... Um, uh, I, I don't want to say adaption because that's... Uh, it's a very quick and responsive change in an organism's um, behavior and uh, uh, and um, uh, physiology to its environment. It's not necessarily an evolutionary step. So an adaptation might be, for example, if you um, took a tiger out of Asia and you put it into North America, um, the tiger might start hunting elk, right? Because it's it's hunting a completely different prey animal now. It hasn't evolved. It's just behaving and changing the way that it acts and, and moves and, and it's changing its um, what would normally be perceived as its normal behavior. Of course, adaptation doesn't necessarily need to be behavior-based. Um, it can also be uh, a non-genetic uh, inherited thing. You may, let's say you make a, a cat. Let's, let's use a cat as a better example. Um, and the cat is an indoor cat. Its paws might develop very differently to an outdoor cat because it's now developing on, you know, very flat surfaces, not very harmful surfaces to its paws that in the wild, in nature, would normally rough up the paws a bit, make them a bit tough. So that cat has now developed physically differently to a natural cat. That is an adaptation. That is not genetic. If that cat with the weird paws, um, with the soft and sensitive paws, has babies, its kittens will not get soft and sensitive paws straight away. They will only get those soft and sensitive paws if they stay in that same indoor environment with the flat surfaces and the soft little cushions and stuff. Um, but if they went outside and started hunting and, and moving around on very huff, uh, huff, that's not a word, rough surfaces, those, uh, the paws on those kittens would develop naturally as any other uh, uh, outdoor cat would, would, would develop. I, on a completely separate note, fundamentally recommend you do not keep your cats as outdoor cats. Please keep them as indoor cats. They kill a lot of native animals. Um, but I'm not going to get into that um, right now. Um, now, I'll make one more example because I know I talk very quickly and it might be difficult to understand what I'm talking about. Another example of adaptation is orcas. If you've ever seen killer whales, I don't like calling them killer whales, but it's the more generic and more, more um, generalized term for them. If you've ever seen killer whales in SeaWorld or in or theme parks in general, um, they generally have very bent dorsal fins. That is a completely unnatural thing. That does not happen in the wild ever. The only orcas that have had bent dorsal fins like that are in uh, captivity. Um, it's still a bit of a secret as to why they have their dorsal fins bent like that, but it's some kind of an adaptation to that environment. It's almost certainly... Um, an emotional and, and, and mental thing. Um, uh, the dorsal fins are bent most likely because of their mental state. It's an indication of an unhealthy animal. Um, and it's really, really sad to see orcas with their dorsal fins bent like that. And unfortunately, um, a lot of attacks from orcas on humans, in fact, every attack that's ever happened from an orca on a human being has happened in captivity. But all of those attacks usually happen with an orca that had a bent dorsal fin. So, that's adaptation. It's not generically um, passed on to offspring. It's not a genetic thing. It is not inherited. Um, however, evolution is. Evolution is different because evolution is the um, gradual development of a trait 
over a course of many generations. Um, oh, well, this is a very common used example with moths. Um, let's say you have a moth, just a common moth. How you might see them in your house or around um, the environment. Now, this moth is living in an environment where there's a lot of pollution. So you get a lot of you know smoke, a lot of uh, um, ash is getting littered around the environment. Maybe there's some factories nearby, you know, um, stuff is getting, the color of objects is a lot darker than it would usually be. You've got a white moth. Now, moths are a very common prey animal for birds. So let's say this white moth lands on a tree which has been blackened by the um, ash. It is immediately killed by a bird. It stands out like a sore thumb. That moth is getting picked off. And the, that, that whole generation of moths with the, with the white um, coloration to their wings and their bodies are being killed by predators. Um, then a mutation occurs. Total random mutation. Completely random. It's just a really, really lucky mutation. They happen all the time. Most of the time they're harmless. But this one's popped up. And it changes the color of the moth's um, um, body. It's a phenotype mutation. It looks different now. Now the moth is black. We've got a black moth. The black moth lands on a black tree and the bird flies past it. It cannot see the moth. It blends in. The bird goes, picks off another white moth, and it dies. Um, then you've got a whole... Then, then that moth, that moth that survived, the black one, gets to have offspring. And um, those offspring are black as well because it was, it was a genetic mutation. That's genetic. That's inherited. Now that's evolution, because you've got a generation of moths now which are living, um, or not just moths, but organisms which are living with a completely new trait, and they're passing that on to their offspring, and it's eventually overwhelming the old trait. And um, before you know it, you've got a whole population of black moths, and all the white ones are practically extinct, or if not, they are extinct. And um, this whole new generation of moths is now black. But then you can have a problem where you have an extinction event, for example, which happens very, very quickly. And it happens so fast, in fact, that it actually prevents... Um, it, it happens so fast that the animals that are affected by it are not able to evolve fast enough to those conditions. That is also where adaptation comes in. Let's look at it like this. Look at the, the extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs, all right? So when that happened, and when that asteroid hit off the uh, Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, in, the, in what is now the Chicxulub Crater, um, it devastated the world. It blocked out the sunlight with all this debris, all this dust was thrown up into the atmosphere. Without sunlight, photosynthesis could not happen. So now you've got very, very few plants on the planet. So all the big, you know, big, huge herbivores die off. And when they die off, all the big, huge carnivores that ate those big, huge herbivores die off as well. Now you've got a world where there are no big plants, there are no big animals living on it whatsoever. No megafauna anymore on the planet. What animals would survive that? What animals would be able to adapt to those changes very quickly? Small animals. Animals that don't need to eat very much, right? So you've got animals like um, small mammals, like uh, uh, Cynognathus, survived the, the Cretaceous extinction. And it crawled out from its burrows and started eating, you know, the tiny little amounts of food that were left over. And um, it didn't have any large predators to hunt it anymore. And so that synognathus, that little mammal, could run around and it adapted to its environment. It did not need to evolve. It adapted to an extinction. And the reason it could do that was because the other animals that died out, like the big dinosaurs, were unable to evolve and adapt to that extinction themselves because they were so specified to their environment and to their conditions. That's the problem with evolution. It's a losing race. You cannot win in evolution. Because the more you evolve, the more specified you become as a species and you, you, as an organism, and you can't survive something that when that changes your environment. So um, look at humans, for example. We are extremely versatile and adaptable organisms. We can get around just about any situation nature throws at us as long as it's not on the cosmic scale, like an asteroid or a solar flare. If it's Earth-bound, we can pretty much survive it. Um, tsunamis, we get around that. You know, uh, uh, Earthquakes, we get around that. But eventually, we're going to get so specified and so uh, uh, pinpointed in our behavior that we're going to you know, be living life in a very uh, um, file manner, you know, 
everything's done as it is sort of uh, ordered, I guess, in a very orderly manner. When that happens and an extinction event occurs, I really don't think we're going to survive it, unless we're living on other planets by then, which we very well could be. We're going to Mars within the next decade, which is crazy, and I'm really excited for that. I'm so proud and so happy to be a part of this generation where science is, is back in the public eye. It's, it's fantastic. Um, so yeah, Jurassic Chicken, that's to answer your question about adaptation and evolution. I hope that I answered it. If not, let me know in the comments section and I will um, try to explain it a little bit better. I'm kind of rambling. It's now 11 p.m. at night and I decided to make this really quickly. Um, I do apologize for the... Um, the uh, there's no uh, footage in this video simply because it's night time and I can't be bothered doing it. <laughs> I probably look like a crazy person. Um, yeah, stay safe, everyone that's watching this, um, or listening, I guess, and, um, social distance yourselves, coronavirus is a big issue, um, but it, we are not at war, I'm getting a little bit annoyed when people say, you know, this is a war, it's not a war, there are, it, that's just disrespecting the wars and the people that have fought in wars before us, and, and, and I don't, I do not, um, condone that whatsoever, so yeah, thank you guys for watching and listening, I hope you learned something, and I will see you all next time, cheers.